Over the last decade, we've seen a handful of generational talents get drafted into the league who will be talked about for years to come. Names such as Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, and Kale McCarr were all selected within the top five picks of their respected drafts. But buried within their drafts are also superstars who seem to get overshadowed when looking at the class as a whole. Stars who, although are dominating the league today, fell as late as the seventh round. So we're going to show those players some love and look back at rounds four through seven to find the biggest NHL draft steals of the last decade. The 2012 draft is notorious for being arguably the worst draft of the last decade, but some big names did manage to get selected. For instance, Andre Vasilevsky was taken 21st overall after names like Slater Cuckoo were taken within the top 10, but another star goaltender was also taken during that draft, when in the 5th round, the Winnipeg Jets decided to select Connor Hellebuck, and that decision would be a franchise-altering one. Since relocating to Winnipeg, the Jets never really had a stable number one goaltender. At least, they didn't have one who was consistent. Their best netminder at the time was Andre Pavlek, who, although decent, wasn't necessarily the greatest goaltender. But once Hellebuck bursted onto the scene after the 15-16 season, he would beat out Pavlik for the starting spot, and the rest is history. David Pasternak. Trying to pull the Bruins even in round two. He closes, Deeks, and Hellebuck makes a spectacular save and gives the signal himself. Hellebuck would go on to become the permanent Jets starter in the 16-17 season and was able to take the team on a run to the Western Conference Final in 2018, also taking home the Vesna Trophy in the 1920 season. Besides Hellebuck, Jacob Slavin was also taken in the fourth round. Slavin has always been extremely underrated, being a solid contributor both offensively and defensively. When looking back at 2012, his name is always a standout. But speaking of the term underrated, the 2013 draft produced two of the most underrated players in the entire league. I embarrassingly once stated that David Riddick was just as good, if not better, than Predators netminder UC Soros. And looking back, I couldn't be more wrong, as after longtime Predator Pecorine hung up the skates, Soros was finally able to show off his full potential, breaking out as an elite goaltender after many, including myself, overlooked him. This last season, Soros developed so well that he was a finalist for the Vesna Trophy and helped Nashville snag a playoff spot before missing the series with an injury. Nashville got a gem in the fourth round, and with the way Soros is projecting, he may end up actually winning the Vesna sooner rather than later. Now, this offseason, the Flames made a blockbuster trade with the Florida Panthers in return getting Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Weger. We're gonna focus on Uyghur. As to some, he's considered underrated, and to others, overrated. Uyghur seems to be very hit or miss in the eyes of the fans, and he was just as much of a debate to the scouts apparently, as he was just five picks away from going undrafted in 2013. It took a while for him to blossom, but when he did, the Panthers reaped the rewards, as Uyghur evolved into a great offensive contributor, slowly accumulating more assists and points as his career went on. But but some fans like to point out that at times, his defense may seem a bit suspect, and for a player set to make about $6.5 million to play defense, it could throw some people off. Me personally, I love Uyghur, and I look forward to seeing how he does this season with his new team. When digging into the 2014 draft, a handful of selections caught my eye. Devontae's is one I instantly found intriguing, as even the Islanders seem to undervalue him. Taze is highly regarded as being one of the league's best defensemen, mainly in the analytics community. But after getting traded from Long Island to Denver for just two seconds, those stat heads were able to prove that they were correct, as Taze's game was taken to a whole new level once arriving, becoming a major 
piece of a lethal Avs defensive unit, all while providing some solid offense. For a fourth round pick, the Avalanche are benefiting massively from the Islanders' luck. However, what really stuck out to me were picks 116 through 118. Three picks in a row all turned out to be NHL players. The first at 116 was Danton Heinen, who is a decent bottom six producer. The second pick at 117 was Michael Bunting, who at age 26 had an underrated rookie season playing alongside Austin Matthews, but it's pick 118 that is what really made me intrigued. When Henrik Lundqvist hung up the skates, New York was unsure who would take over the helm, but they got lucky taking a gamble back in 2014 because that 118th pick ended up becoming Igor Sesterkin, whose rise to stardom has been incredible to watch. From 2014 to 2018, Sesterkin was playing overseas in the KHL, but after signing with the team in 2019 and making his debut, he showed signs of greatness. Igor became the full-time starter during the 2021 season, and although eventually missing the playoffs, the following year, he popped off. Penguins able to get it out of the zone, pushed ahead to Crosby, he's got Latang with a little save by Shesterkin! And Shesterkin made as good a save as you're going to see on the first one. Here's the first save. Latang with that chance. Shesterkin finished last season with 36 wins and a 935 save percentage, being the clear Vesna winner as well as a nominee for the Hart Trophy for league MVP. Igor has become a top two goaltender in the league and the sky is the limit in terms of what he can do next. The 2015 draft is highly regarded as the best and deepest class of the past decade, with names such as Connor Garland and Troy Terry getting selected in the fifth round. Garland was a hidden gem, and especially for the Coyotes, a team who struggled to develop and generate any minor league talent. Garland would earn a full-time roster spot in 2019 and became a gutsy, gritty forward who had a knack for generating offense. Now on Vancouver, he had a career year, breaking the 50 point mark and signing a four-year extension with the team. As for Terry, this season, as most know, he had a breakout season of his own. Scoring 37 goals after failing to even get past seven, Terry looks poised to continue that success. And same goes with my personal favorite, Andrew Mangiapane, who was taken 166th overall in the sixth round. Many already knew that the bread man was due for a breakout, but no one expected him to be a 35 goal scorer. Mangiapane has become a pivotal piece to the Flames top six and is also looking to capitalize on last season's success. But with those names aside, Kirill Kaprizov being taken in the fifth round is hands down the biggest steal of the 2015 draft. Normally, if looking at this draft and knowing what we know now, most casual fans would ask why Kaprizov wasn't taken higher. And the answer is simple. There were many uncertainties whether Kaprizov was going to leave Russia to play in the league or not. So, teams passed up on him numerous times. But not Minnesota. They took a risk and got quite the reward, as in the 2021 season, he made the decision to come over to the States and immediately he put on a show. Region of Dowdy picked off Kaprizov from Minnesota. He scores! And the Wild win it in overtime 4-3. Kaprizov will go on to deservingly win the Rookie of the Year and continued to dominate after signing a long-term deal with the Wild, posting 108 points last season and becoming one of the league's best scoring wingers. In 2016, the Devils would get a great playmaker in the sixth round, selecting Jesper Braun. His 73-point campaign this season may have just put New Jersey on the right path, as after years of rebuilding or retooling, his breakout season may show management that this team is finally ready to take a step forward. Most Devils fans knew of Brock's potential and finally got to see his game develop, as he's now a key piece of the Devils lineup and will be for years to come. After 2016, things start to get very hard to judge, because most players selected afterwards have yet to even make it to the NHL, so we can only go based off of play in either the 
the minor leagues or overseas, which isn't fair to the players themselves. But I wanted to end the video talking about one last player who will almost certainly be on these lists in the years to come. In 2019, the Flames selected Silver Tips goaltender Dustin Wolf, and since getting selected, Wolf has made a name for himself in both the WHL and the AHL, winning goaltender of the year both in juniors and this current season in the AHL. As of now, Calgary is a playoff contender with Jacob Markstrom in net, but over the next few seasons, make sure to be on the lookout, as Wolf has quietly become one of the best goalie prospects in the entire NHL. So, the man they call the Big Bad Wolf may do more than just blow your house down, because he'll be shutting your whole team out instead.